Welcome to ARG Communications tutorial on setting up your voicemail within Zach. In a previous tutorial, we showed you how to log into Zach. Once logged in to set up your voicemail, simply click on the voicemail icon. And in here, you have three headings. You'll have inbox, recordings, and deleted. Inbox are all new messages within your voicemail. So any new message would show up in the inbox. Recordings, um, there is a license required for that. Um, so you'd have to find out from your system administrator um, if you're able to do recordings uh, on your system. Any on-demand recording that you do will be dropped into your mailbox and it'll be dropped in under this heading here recordings uh, this is all for all recorded calls that you create um, lastly any uh, inbox item or a new voicemail that you delete goes into the deleted tab uh, this way if you made a mistake and didn't want to delete it or uh, needed to go back into that message or retain that message uh, it would be listed here under deleted. Uh, in this case, I did have a voicemail from a customer. Um, I have a couple options. I can play it. I can click on the more information tab, which gives me the number that they called from. Um, I can play it from my bound phone, which in this case would be my desk phone. I can mark it as unread and put it back into my inbox as a new message. Or I could delete it permanently. And lastly, if I needed to, I could save this as a audio file on my computer, um, such in a case of um, possibly a message that needs to be emailed to another person or if, uh, given to the police if there's some kind of a threat made, uh, something like that in those cases. Uh, alternatively to this, and I will show you uh, in just a bit you can set your voicemail up to email you as well when you have messages so that your messages are in an email uh, with a WAV file attachment uh, I like to do that simply because if I need to transfer that message to somebody who does not reside on my system I can easily email it without having to save it save it to a, a, a folder on my computer and then open up email, create the email, attach the message. It's simply a forward uh, from my email at that point. Okay, to set up your greetings, uh, and that will be what the callers hear when they call your mailbox, click on greetings. Um, the first heading here, recorded name. This is important that you record your first and last name so that if you're using a dial by name directory, uh, the caller looking for you would be able to find you. If your name is not recorded, um, you will not get dial by name uh, lookup when a customer wants to get a hold of you. You will not be listed. Okay, so to record that, you're going to simply click on the start record and uh, it will use whatever kind of microphone you're set up for. So if you're set up for a soft phone, um, and you're using a, a USB or your Bluetooth headset, you'll record through that device. If it's just simply the microphone on a computer, you'll record through that device. Okay. Um, and then you could also upload if somebody had professional recordings made or possibly wanted somebody with a different voice, uh, a more professional radio type voice to do your recordings. Um, you can have those recorded. They have to be done in a special format, which you could contact your IT administrator to find out what format that needs to be. Um, and you can upload that recording here. So here you're just recording your first and last name. In your greetings tab, you have four greetings that you can record. Um, most people just use one. Some use two. Some use three or four. Um, in any case, to record that greeting, you're going to highlight that greeting. Uh, you're going to go ahead and click the blue uh, microphone icon and start recording. Um, this, these recordings can be named. So if, say, number one was your standard greeting, 
I could type in their standard if I wanted to, or I could just leave the default greeting number one. In many cases, greeting one is just your standard uh, away from your desk type of greeting. Uh, greeting two could be an out of office greeting. Um, greeting three could be in a, in a meeting greeting. And then greeting four could be a vacation greeting. And again, I'll, I'll go over the importance of these and why you might want to use possibly just an out of office and in a meeting greeting. Um, so I record those. Um, the checkbox indicates which greeting is my active greeting. Okay. And lastly, um, which most people will not use, is you could have an auto attendant greeting for your mailbox. Um, auto attendants give options. They don't take messages. Um, but in many cases, your callers have already been either through an auto attendant or transferred from an attendant, rang your phone, got your voicemail. Um, in many cases, the last thing they're going to want to do is dial another option or listen to another message with options. Um, they always have the ability to zero out of your mailbox if need be. Um, so that's where you'll record your greeting. You, again, you can upload um, greetings here as well. Um, again, they have to be in a special format. Once you've done all that, you're going to click apply here. Now my apply is grayed out because I haven't made any changes. And then you're going to click OK. And that's it. Your, your voicemail has been easily set up with your greetings. Now another part of voicemail setup that you have control over, unless your administrator has uh, taken it away from you, is the ability to set up how long your phone will ring before it goes to voicemail. And this is on a user by user basis, again, unless the administrator has restricted that kind of access. So to set up your call forwarding or call handling rules, you're gonna click on these three dots here for more options and click settings. You have tabs up here. You're going to go ahead and click call handling. Now, in my case, I've already set up a call handling rule and I've uh, labeled it as CFNA or a call forward no answer. Uh, to add a rule, you're just simply going to click on add, but I'm going to double click on this one to show you what I've done. So uh, for the event, in this case, I want it on a no answer event, okay, and I want it to forward to voicemail. Now, there are other options I can choose, and I'll go over this uh, in a brief minute. So this is simply a call forward no answer. I haven't answered my phone. So when you click on no answer, um, it's going to apply this rule. Now, these seconds are how long your phone will ring before voicemail picks up. So I could down arrow that. I could choose from fixed settings. Most users will use 20 seconds. That's approximately four to five rings somewhere in that aspect. Um, or you could custom um, and you can enter in the amount of rings. So if you didn't want 20, but you wanted uh, 10 seconds, I would enter in 10 right here. And then the action is going to be forward to my active greeting, which I showed you just previously with the check mark and record message. Okay. Um, I could set up a new greeting um, based on my presence. And there is a previous tutorial that shows you how to manage your presence. So in this, if I wanted to set up a rule that when I'm out of my office, I want my calls to go to a specific greeting or if my presence is in a specific greet, uh, status, I want it to go to a specific greeting. So I'm going to say out of office. So in this case, I'm going to write out of office. Um, I'm going to say it's for any incoming call because now it's going to, the rule is not going to be based on any of this, whether I'm on a phone or no answer, it's going to apply it to any call coming to my phone. And I'm going to say, I want to, when my presence is in a specific format and I want it to forward to my message. Okay. So now it's asking me, well, what presence do you want to apply this rule to? So I click on it and I'm going to click on not available. Okay. 
click OK. Now, in this case, I may not want it to go to my active greeting. I may have a second greeting set up for out of office. So in this, I could click if I had um, greeting one recorded or greeting, sorry, greeting two recorded. I could click on that and then greeting two would be would show here. Uh, and then I say you record message this way when I'm in an out of office um, or well, sorry when I'm in unavailable all calls that come in would go to my out of office greeting to let customers or callers know that I am no longer in the office um, another rule that you could set up here uh, would be possibly for administrators um, might be on the phone um, and in this case it's going to be again any call that comes in while I'm on the phone this time okay um, has nothing to do with presence so I'm going to deactivate that but in this case I might want when I'm on the phone I might not want my calls to go to voicemail I might want my calls to go to my administrative assistant so in this case I could put in here forward to and then specify who to forward this to okay so if I wanted to forward it to the operator group um, I know what my extensions are for my operator group or if I could have it go to a specific person say I wanted it to go to Aaron I could have it go in there I could have it go to my uh, a cell phone number if I didn't use an app or my home phone number I could put in uh, the home phone number here okay um, so any number it can forward to so if I wanted to go to my um, uh, say an administrative assistant um, I would go ahead and choose 304 or choose Jeff 307 sorry and I actually have to choose the person okay so now anytime I'm on the phone uh, my calls would go to Jeff of course Jeff's not my administrative assistant but uh, he's my backup and and if I needed him to pick up uh, a call uh, while I'm on the phone this is how I would set up that rule I would click OK and my rule would be set up um, so that's setting up call handling rules the last part of voicemail is actually what we talked about voicemail notification okay um, this could be an email notification which I've set up here it also could be some sort of um, cell phone notification or call notification okay uh, in many cases email is your best bet most people use email um, rather than having to call and log into a voicemail etc etc so for email I'm just going to click on this one um, it's going to notify me on new messages and it's going to be contingent upon the type of media so in this case because you can get faxes uh, and I'll go over that in a, in a previous uh, tutorial because you can get faxes you don't want you might not want the faxes being emailed to you you might want the faxes being emailed to you so in this case this is just simply I want my voice type of media or audio media sent to me in an email so I name the rule um, I tell it how to notify me in this case you know it's going to be an email I click email I put my email address in here I want it to attach the wave file not just notify me of a new message and I don't want it to wait um, for a set amount of time now you could have this wait you know a minute before it sends you the email notification or five minutes or an hour um, that's entirely up to you most people uh, myself I want um, copies of my e uh, voicemail in my email so I do it immediately at zero hours and this timer goes to right here if still on red leave messages on red okay um, and the reason why um, this is be just because you check your voicemail in your email it does not delete or show as a red message in your voicemail box now if I wanted it to at least go to 
um, mark the message as saved. I could do that. So after it emails me, it saves the message and my notification goes out. I personally don't like to do that because if there's a problem with my email server, um, I'm not going to be notified of any new messages in my voicemail box. So I leave it as unread because either way I have to do something with it on my phone um, once I decided what to do with the email. So uh, I leave it unread. Most people would as well. And I apply the rule to voicemails, okay? Um, and so anytime a voicemail is left, I get the email notification. Um, email notification is dependent upon some settings on the phone system, which should already be set up for you by your IT administrator. Uh, and I can go ahead and click OK here. Now, I could do the same thing for faxes. I can, If I wanted my faxes sent to me or sent to my email, I could change the type here from voice to fax and then rename this email to fax. Um, this way, anytime a fax, if I have a personal fax number, if somebody faxes it directly to me, those faxes would be emailed to me as well. Okay. And that's as simple as it is to set up voicemail. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for other tutorials on Zach.